This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is my mobile platform for my sim racing chassis. Mobile platform? Riser? What, am I a drummer up on a throne? Am I a king with my throne up on a stage or a pedestal? No, I just wanted my sim racing rig off the ground. Why would I want to do this? Well, I find when my rig is on the ground that it tends to get very dirty. It's down there with the dirt, it gets all over my rig, and I'm constantly cleaning it. Getting it off the ground is going to keep it that much cleaner. Also, I find that when my sim chassis is down on the ground, it's a little hard to get in and out of. I want it a little more up in the air so that I can just climb in and, in and out with ease. And then on top of that, here in my studio, I need to be able to move my rig around. So I wanted it to be on caster wheels so I could roll it anywhere in the room, pivot it in any direction. And then on top of that, let's face it, making a little platform for your chassis is what like the big boys do. Think of a CXC sim racing chassis. They're up in the air, they look great. When you're talking top presentation, you need it up in the air where you can see it beautifully. You can do special lighting and it just looks badass. So for me, what I did was I measured off my rig. How much footprint does it actually take? In my case, we we're looking at about four feet wide as far as my monitor stand would be. And the monitors stick out a hair more than that. And it was gonna be about five feet in length. So I drew up some plans, figured out the lumber that I was gonna need, and headed down to the lumber yard to get some wood, some screws, and all the things I was gonna need to put this thing together. So, do you need one of these? I don't know if you need it up on wheels, but a base for your rig is a nice thing to have, so maybe this is something you would be interested in. But more importantly, maybe it'll inspire you to think that we're never done finishing our rigs, we're always improving, we're always modifying, we're always doing things just to make us more happy as a sim rig. As a sim racer, I should say. So, let's start with my plans. It was really simple. It was just gonna be a basic box out of two by fours. And for that, I would need four eight foot two by fours, one four foot by eight foot plywood sheet, four large locking caster wheels, a box of two and a half inch wood screws, two and a half inch pipe mounts, and then on hand at home, I'd need a measuring tape, a drill, a saw, and any finishing materials to make it look nice. In my situation living in an apartment, it meant that all my good tools are actually in storage. And the other thing is that I only have a hatchback car. I don't have a truck to carry a full sheet of plywood. So I was gonna have to have all my lumber pre-cut and that was gonna make it a little bit more expensive, but all in all, it was an under $100 project. So I went there with a list of materials that I was gonna need that would be cut down in size to fit in my car and be able to build here in the apartment with the tools that I had on hand. And in the end, I was gonna need two of those two by fours cut down to 48 inches. I was gonna need two more cut down to 45 inches, two at 57 inches, and then two at 22 inches. Out of four two by fours, that's gonna leave you a few small pieces left over. I also had my plywood cut down to three four foot by two foot pieces, and then one of those two foot pieces cut in half down to one by four. So with all the materials on hand, I cleared out of space exactly where I'm standing now, and I got to building that outer box first. Starting with the longest two by fours, 57 inches, that are the sides or the length of the box. With the next longest ones, the 48 inch ones, or the shorter ones, overlapping those longer pieces. This gives us a four foot by eight foot box. Eight wood screws later, and that step is done. Next, I will install a cross brace with the 45 inch two by fours in the short direction. I am installing them at 22 inches from the top and from the bottom of the box. Eight wood screws later, and that step is complete. The smallest pieces were the 22 inch two by fours to brace those cross braces I just installed. I centered them at 24 inches side to side in the up and down direction to the cross braces and then eight wood screws later, both of those were installed. Now if you had a truck, you would have brought home a full sheet of plywood, you would have cut it down three feet off of it down to five foot by four and you just place that on top, zip it down and you'd be done. In my case, my, my top was gonna to be in three pieces. So I took the two two by four sections and I wanted to make them look really nice on the corners. So I took the time to line them up perfectly, get them all aligned and then screw them down in place. I'm not sure why I left that centerpiece out, but at this point, I have enough rigidity or sturdiness out of the base to flip it over and install the caster wheels. 
I happen to have a few extra pieces of two by four left over. So I screwed one into each of the corners to reinforce the box, as well as to give me more of a footing to mount my caster wheels. A few screws for each corner piece, and then four screws for each wheel, and my mobility has been added to my platform. So I flipped it back over again, this time onto its wheels, and then installed that center sheet, and then added a few more screws to the whole thing to hold the top down and give it added strength. Ta-da, the base is actually complete. I mean, at this point, you're down to finishing. If you wanted to stain it or paint it, you could do any of those things. And for me, I was kind of in a hurry. The reason I was doing this was because I had added a green screen. I needed to be able to move things around very quickly and I needed it up and running fast. So I found some cool grippy, black grippy material that you'd use almost to line the shelves in your kitchen. I found a few rolls of that and I glued it down to the top just to give it kind of a finished look. And now comes the really fun part, when you get to install your monitor stand and your rig up onto the platform, and it was time to do that. So I started with my monitor stand, which I had stripped down to just the stand itself. I got it in place, made sure it was centered, and then installed pipe mounts to the base to hold it down so it can't fall over when bumped or moved. I then added my three monitors, my Sim Experience power supply for my wheel. In order to lift my mighty RC S1 onto the base, I had to get help from my brother. We lifted the chassis up onto the platform and then moved it into place. I could now start adding the rest of my hardware. I could add my pedals, I could add my wheel, I could put my shifter handbrake mount and those components on as well, and then finish off my new wiring. I took a little extra time to make sure I had my wire routing good and keep those wires as invisible or put away as possible. In the end, I'm very happy with my results. I mean, I needed something that was going to be very quick to move around. I needed it to be easy. I needed it to be solid and stable when I then got stood back on it or used it for sim racing. And it accomplished all of those goals. I still have a little bit of finished work to do till I'd be perfectly happy, but I'm not exactly how I want it to look. But I did need it up and running fast and the finished work can still be done later. It is so stable, it is so strong, that I wouldn't even guess I was on a platform when standing on it. With the locking casters, it stays in place, and it doesn't even move when I get on or off the platform. The wiring came out clean, and all that actually leads to the whole platform or rig is a long extension cord with an ethernet wire that will give it the power and internet that it needs. In total, the project cost me under a hundred bucks and it accomplished all of my goals. It only took a couple hours to build and in the end, it actually took me more time to put the rig and the monitor stand and do all the wiring than it took to build the box itself. Now in your case, maybe you don't need the mobility. Maybe you just want to build something stationary, make it taller, make it hold all your extra power supplies and computer and things. Tuck it all away and hide everything away super clean. You could do that and add lighting. Maybe this gave you an idea for your own rig but the important thing is you got to remember our rigs they're never finished they're an evolution they're a work in progress we're always changing adapting modifying trying to get the most out of our sim racing chassis I, this is my race car I'm going to do everything I can to make everything perfect for me. And in this case, I needed the mobility. So if you have a cool project that you've done, or you have a cool story behind your rig, I'd love to hear it. Send me an email at Sean, S-H-A-U-N, thesimpit.com. Love to see your pics, hear your story, and maybe tell people about yours as well. But that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.